Do we arbitrate or we don't arbitrate in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia? Two seconds and we jump into the information. Hello everyone, my name is Maria and Robert, lawyer and arbitrator with a base in Dubai, UAE for the past 15 years and I'm happy to be talking today about a matter that is my true passion, what took me to study law and I'll be happy to talk about Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia arbitration seems to be moving. We didn't get many inquiries about I want to arbitrate in Saudi Arabia or I want, I need to plug in an arbitration agreement in the contract that we are signing uh, currently, can you help? I've gotten about two in, in the last month. So this motivated me to draft some notes uh, and prepare the present video and also a publication that is available in our firm's website. So when we decide whether to arbitrate or not to arbitrate, the purpose today is that we address five main questions, five main items, five basics about arbitrating in Saudi Arabia. I anticipate that there will be loads of movement in the arbitration uh, world in Saudi Arabia. Why? Because we experience a similar development and I don't know the sort of development that there will be, but uh, because Saudi Arabia now is very obvious that they want to attract foreign investment, they want to attract foreigners to invest in their country, to set up in their country, to do business in the country. Arbitration seems to be uh, one of the tools that need to be improved because you need to have nice hotels, they need to have nice infrastructures, you need to have uh, the venues to have uh, arbitrations, etc. You also must have the roots of the arbitration with, uh, and you need to respect the, the, the arbitration, you need to be able to execute in Saudi Arabia. Um, we are going to be looking at, uh, at the basics of arbitrating in Saudi Arabia. The very first thing is, do they have an arbitration law? or is it covered on their code of procedure? The answer is that they do have an arbitration law since 2012 with freedoms. You can choose the governing law, you can choose the institution, you can choose the seat of the arbitration. When we read about these freedoms, uh, it's important to keep a big eye on Sharia law. We are going to be discussing about it, but keep it an eye because the governing law, if you want to arbitrate in Saudi with English law, for example, you need to ensure that the process and that no Sharia law is breached during the course of, of, of the arbitration. So you will need English lawyers, but also experts on Sharia law. Keep this on the back of your head for now. Next question. Do we have arbitral institutions in Saudi Arabia? The answer is yes, but since 2016 only. The name of the center is the Saudi Center for Commercial Arbitration. I'm gonna leave the, the link of, of this center so you can uh, play a little bit around, know the rules um, and, all the, and every uh, other data that you are interested about. Number three, is Saudi Arabia a member of the New York Convention? For those of you not familiar with the New York Convention or with arbitration, the New York Convention is key for the viability and the success of arbitration globally. Why? Because the New York Convention is a, is a convention for the recognition and enforcement of arbitral awards. An award is what an arbitral tribunal renders and signs, the same way that a national court uh, judge will sign a judgment. Yes, so an award is like a judgment. Saudi Arabia has been a member of the New York Convention since 1994. I was surprised when I was preparing the, this video that it signed up and it became a member of the, of the convention 10 years before UAE. And the history of, the, of arbitration in the UAE is huge. It has developed significantly. Will we see the same development in support of the business development in the country is yet, is yet to see, is yet to see. Uh, for sure that being a member of the New York Convention does not make you a successful country in terms of arbitration. What I mean by successful country in terms of arbitration is that people and companies can rely on arbitration. You go through an arbitration, you get a paper that is signed by an arbitration 
Well, uh, that paper needs to be recognized and enforced by the tribunals. Otherwise, you are not a successful country in terms of arbitration. So when we uh, assess whether the country respects or not the New York Convention, it's very important, especially in the Arab world, the notion of public order. Because judges have ample uh, decision-making powers to uh, prevent the enforcement if it contravenes public order. So usually in Arab countries, it's linked to the concept of Sharia. We will see uh, what can constitute Sharia or what does not constitute Sharia. In my experience in the, in the UAE, when I arrived to the UAE early in 2010, it was the very beginning. We were just starting to read positive jurisprudence. I mean, of course, there was positive jurisprudence, especially internationally, since they um, became members of the New York Convention. But national um, domestic arbitration was still falling behind. And then over the years, in 15 years, it's amazing. Not only the city has changed, but the arbitration world has also, also changed. We will see what uh, Saudi will do with their concept of public order and their relationship with, uh, with Sharia. We, 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 will, we will see and I can't wait to share with all of you over the next years. Number four is what considerations do we need to keep in mind when uh, drafting an arbitration agreement uh, intending uh, to have Saudi Arabia as the seat of the arbitration? Or uh, you have an arbitration elsewhere and you intend to, at some point, execute in, in Saudi. Many, in many instances, we don't know. But usually when you have a Saudi party, this is a must. The Saudi Arabia arbitration law covers the drafting of arbitration agreements in Article 9. The Article 9 has three paragraphs. The summary is the following. Arbitration agreements need to be in writing. You can enter into an arbitration agreement before or after the dispute arises. Arbitration agreements can be included in exchanges. So you don't have to have a single document. It can be in, in, in exchanges, yeah? You agree to something, then you, you build on the, on the relationship and you agree on arbitration in, a, in an email, for example, or it can be by reference. We agree on a certain transaction project and we agree to FIDIC. What's important when we do it by reference is that the reference is sufficiently clear to include arbitration as well. Yeah, this is very important in the Arab world, so it's good that either you mentioned that arbitration as well, or the reference includes the alternative dispute mechanism or the dispute mechanism as much as you can, yes? Obviously, if you can, just draft the arbitration agreement itself. But if you only have the reference, ensure that you make a little note to the dispute resolution mechanism included in that set of rules or regulations, yeah? And the last one, what other matters do we need to keep in mind if we are thinking about arbitrating in Saudi Arabia? Well, are, the, their arbitration law also allows the national courts to support arbitrations via ordering, document production, witnesses, experts. They are also habilitated to assist with precautionary measures. And of course, they have an important role to appoint uh, arbitrators when the parties did not take care of, uh, of an alternative uh, institution or, or appointment, appointment method. Another matter to keep in mind is the, the matter of Sharia. Uh, I'm for sure not an expert on, on Sharia. We have our litigation team who handles this. But for example, in Saudi Arabia, if the award gives punitive damages to a party, you may not be able to execute that award in Saudi. The same as if uh, the, during the process at the hearing, uh, there were witnesses that were not placed under oath at the time of their testimony. This could also be a reason um, that could be considered that contravenes public order and the award could not be enforced. And uh, to, for the very, very last, to ensure that the arbitration law of Saudi Arabia protects confidentiality, um, as this is an important factor for all the parties going to arbitration uh, in many instances. So uh, you know that is there as well. 
And in very brief, we have covered five topics about arbitration in Saudi. I hope that you have learned a little bit. If you have or you have enjoyed the video, please do like it. Subscribe to my channel to get to new information as soon as possible. If you have any general questions concerning, uh, concerning arbitration or, uh, or life in, in, in the UAE or in the extended Middle East legal issues about the Middle East, I will be very happy to address this general inquiry so everyone can benefit. Follow me on social media so when I tell everyone, hey, there is new information, you, you get that, uh, that message. Thank you so much for your time and I look forward to the interaction with all of you.